Hello grade 11s and welcome to this lesson on probability. We will discuss how to draw and use tree diagrams and use them to find the probability of compound events occurring. A compound event is when more than one event occurs. For example, tossing a coin twice or throwing a dice thrice and so on. A tree diagram shows all the possible outcomes of each event. Let's do an example to show how useful it can be. We have two boxes. The first has five yellow balls and three blue balls and another with six green balls and four white balls. We can represent the probability of choosing balls out of the two boxes on a tree diagram. The first box has eight balls. Five of them are yellow and three are blue. The two colors form the first two branches of the tree. The fraction of probability of choosing each ball is listed on each branch. The fractions on each branch add up to one. We've completed the first level of the diagram. We're going to do the level in two stages so that we can explain it slowly. We'll start with the first branch. If we picked a yellow ball from the first box, we would still need to pick a ball from the second box. There are two colors in the box, green and white. Of the 10 balls, six of them are green and four of them are white. Did you notice that these two fractions also add up to one? The beauty of a tree diagram is that it can represent all the possibilities. So far, our diagram represents what could happen if we first picked a yellow ball. Now let's complete the diagram. If a blue ball was picked from the first box, we would still have the same probability of choosing a green or white ball from the second box. Now that the tree is drawn, the next step is to write the outcomes. Outcomes follow a path from where the tree starts up to the last branch. Let's do this together. Firstly, we have yellow, then green. Secondly, it's yellow, then white. The third one will be blue, then green. And the fourth is blue, then white. This shows us that there are four possible outcomes. Now let's use the diagram to find the probability of picking a yellow and then a green ball. We multiply the probability of getting yellow and the probability of getting green. 5 over 8 multiplied by 6 over 10 equals 30 over 80. This simplifies to 3 over 8. And now for something completely different. Let's do another example. We will consider the outcomes of tossing a coin twice. In both the first and second toss, there are two possible outcomes. We could toss a head or a tail. If we get a head in the first toss, then there is a possibility that the second toss would give us a head again. If we get a head in the first toss, there's a possibility that the second will give us a tail. If we get a tail in the first toss, there is a possibility that the second is a head. If we get a tail in the first toss, there is a possibility that the second toss will also give us a tail. The probability for each toss is half. To calculate the probability of getting two tails, we multiply the probability of each of the possible outcomes. The probability of getting two tails in succession can be written in notation as probability of TT equals half times half. This is equal to a quarter. Next, we calculate the probability of tossing a head and a tail. There are two possible ways that this could happen. We could either toss a head first and then a tail, or a tail first and then a head. The probability of tossing a head and a tail is half times half, which is equal to a quarter. The probability of tossing a tail followed by a head is also a quarter. Since there are two possible ways of getting our desired result, we add the two possibilities. This is equal to one quarter plus one quarter, which equals half. Working with tree diagrams makes finding the probability of an event occurring far easier. Thank you for joining us, Grade 11s. Remember to look at the tasks for this section in the Working with Probability task video. You'll also be able to find more resources on our website, www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.